Black Beauty Black Beauty Adapted by Betty Burney from the screenplay by Caroline Thompson Based on the novel by Anna Sewell Published by Golden Book Copyright 1994 I was born into the world on Farmer Gray's farm. At first, I stayed close to my mother, Duchess, but soon I learned to race and play with the other colts. As I grew older, Farmer Gray's kind words, and plenty of oats, helped me get used to riding with a bit in my mouth, a saddle on my back, and heavy shoes on my feet. But I paid little attention to these things once I discovered I could almost outrun the wind. I was fully trained as a carriage and saddle horse at four and ready to go to a new home. When I said goodbye to my mother, she reminded me to try to do my best. I was sent to live with Squire Gordon and his family. Their estate was called Burtwick Park. When John Manley, the head groom, presented me to Mistress Gordon, the mistress named me Black Beauty. I thought it was a magnificent name. When I met the pony Merrylegs and the mare named Ginger, I knew I would like my new place. I spent many happy days playing in the orchard with Ginger and Merrylegs. They even did a wonderful dance, stepping high and spinning around, just for me. I also worked hard at Burtwick Park, giving it my best, and I was well treated in turn. Good people make good horses, John Manley used to say. One night, a terrible storm blew up as John and I were driving Mr. Gordon home. When we came to the bridge, I sensed that something was wrong. I did not want to cross it, but John urged me forward. Come on, beauty, he pleaded. Reluctantly, I stepped onto the bridge. When we reached the middle, it began to collapse and John fell into the raging water. Squire Gordon and I managed to pull John from the river and get him home. A young stable boy named Joe Green told John he would take care of me. Poor Joe! First he forgot to put a blanket on me. Then he gave me cold water to drink instead of warm. Before long, I became very ill. It was a long time before I was well again. But Joe stayed by my side and learned how to take good care of me. In the end, we became the best of friends. One night, Ginger and I found ourselves in an unfamiliar stable. We had spent the entire day pulling Squire Gordon's finest carriage to a distant city. My poor mistress was very ill and needed to see a special doctor there. We had to stay in the city until the next day. That night I felt uneasy. Sometime during the night, the stable began to fill with smoke. Then I heard a voice cry, FIRE! Suddenly, Joe appeared and bravely led me out through the flames. But where was Ginger? I whinnied as loud as I could. Finally, she whinnied back. 
Joe raced back into the burning stable and led Ginger out. Later, she told me that my whinnying saved her life. Ginger and I were lucky to get through the fire. But luck was not with Mistress Gordon. The doctor said her illness could not be cured unless she moved to a warmer climate. As the Gordons prepared to leave England, new homes had to be found for the horses. It was a sad day when we all said goodbye to the family. Mary Legs was given to the vicar, while Ginger and I were sent to the Earl of Wexmire. In no time, Ginger and I found ourselves miles away from everything dear and familiar. But at least we were still together. You know I'd take you with me if I could, Joe whispered. I swear to you someday, somehow, I'll be with you again. Before he left, Joe turned us over to a new groom. Beauty has a perfect temper, Joe told the groom. Later that day, Ginger and I were harnessed into Lady Wexmire's carriage. We soon discovered that she liked her horses harnessed so that their heads were held high. It felt as if we were being choked. Ginger grew panicky. Suddenly, she reared up and broke away from the carriage. I was seriously injured in the accident. After that, Ginger and I never rode together again. I recovered from the accident, but there was more trouble ahead. One evening, a foolish groom named Reuben rode me to town. He left me in a stable while he spent the night making merry. Reuben was so tired when he came for me that he landed in the saddle backward. When he realized how late it was, he whipped me hard with a tree branch to make me run faster. Get up! he shouted. Move! As I galloped down the rocky road, Reuben dug his sharp spurs into my sides. I tried to run faster. But the going was rough, and one of my shoes came loose. Reuben spurred me on until finally I stumbled and fell, landing hard on my knees and throwing Reuben to the ground. After a long recovery, I was sent off to be sold again. It happened so quickly, I did not even have time to say goodbye to Ginger. Eventually, I was bought by a London cab driver named Jerry Barker. He and his family groomed me lovingly, even braiding my mane. And they gave me a new name, Black Jack. Black Jack wants to be pretty, said Jerry's daughter. It's good people that make good places, I thought to myself. Living with Jerry Barker gave me hope again. London was a busy place with lots of traffic, but Jerry's strong hands and kind ways made me feel confident. You'll be all right, Black, Jerry assured me as I took my place among the other calves and horses. One day in London, I saw a tired horse with a bad cough pulling a shabby cab. All at once I knew it was Ginger. It was wonderful to see her again. As we touched noses, she told me I was the only friend she had ever had. That night I dreamed of the old days. I dreamed of horses dancing at Birtwick Park. Although Jerry treated me well, the work was difficult especially in the winter. 
one night a customer kept us waiting for hours in the freezing night air. They'll be out presently, Black, Jerry told me again and again. When it was finally time to go, Jerry was losing his voice, and I was so numb I was afraid I would stumble. I had hoped to spend the rest of my days with Jerry Barker, but when his health began to fail, he could no longer drive a cab. He took a job on a country estate, and once again I had to say farewell to people I loved. Goodbye, beautiful black, whispered Jerry's wife Polly. For the next two years, I pulled a heavy cart for a corn dealer. When I grew too weak to pull the cart, I was put up for sale one more time. I was sick and tired, but luck was with me that day. I spotted Joe Green at the horse sale. I whinnied and wagged my neck until he finally noticed me. Black Beauty, said Joe when he recognized me. I'm here, Beauty. I won't ever let you out of my sight again. Joe took me to Farmer Thoroughgood's farm where he worked. There, in the farmer's green meadow, I regained my strength and my old friend Joe promised me I would never be sold again. I am contented now, but I often recall those wonderful days at Burtwick Park when I was young, the golden days with Ginger and Merrylegs, the happiest days of my life.